Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone and today's video will be covering everything you need to know about farming in Coral Island. Can you believe that I've actually yet to make this video given that Coral Island is a farm sim game? We've got lots to cover, so without any further ado, let's get into it. So one of the main goals of Coral Island is to turn your overrun land into a lush and lively farm by deciding which crops to grow and which animals to nurture. We've seen a number of video clips and images of how our farm will be able to transform, and I'm so excited for all the possibilities. Now, I won't be talking about ranching in this video, but if you wanna know more about the animals of Coral Island, I will link you to one of my old videos. Even though we've learned a lot more about the game since I made that video, it actually still holds up pretty well, so definitely check it out if you haven't already. But let's begin with the very basics of farming. You will have a set of starter tools, which you will be able to upgrade over time at the blacksmith's shop. This will help to reduce the amount of stamina your player will consume when using the various tools. The tools you will need for farming specifically are the hoe to till soil, the scythe to clear grass and harvest certain crops, and the watering can to, well, water your crops. You will also be able to craft sprinklers, which will automate the watering process. And later down the line, you will even be able to recruit the helping hands of our friendly giant friends on your farm. To do so, you will craft various totems that will summon the giants who will help you both water and harvest your crops. Everything they collect will be stored in this amazing little plant pouch for you to retrieve. We don't exactly know how the system will be unlocked, but I imagine it will be through progressing the main storyline as we meet and interact with the giants. In terms of agriculture, you will be able to choose from a range of crops, flowers, fruit plants, and fruit trees to grow on your farm. You will have plenty of options to choose from, over 75 to be exact, ranging from classics to more exotic and obscure varieties. Crops can only grow in specific seasons, spring, summer, fall, or winter. Most crops will wither at the end of each respective season. However, there are some crops that can actually grow across multiple seasons. Once you're able to unlock the greenhouse for your farm, you will be able to plant any crop inside year round. So this definitely might be something you wanna prioritize unlocking in your early gameplay if you want the flexibility to grow whatever you want, whenever you want it. The crops will have multiple growth stages like what we've seen here. Many will produce just a single harvest but there will also be crops that you can plant once and then reharvest multiple times across the season. So far, we've seen quite a number of crops. In this photo from the Kickstarter campaign, we saw potatoes, strawberries, radishes, carrots, peppers, peas, cauliflower, what I believe may be sugarcane, cucumbers, rhubarb, corn, eggplant, cacti, daisies, sunflowers, star fruit, beets, pineapple, hibiscus, watermelon, and wheat. I'm by no means an expert and none of these have actually been confirmed, but this is my best guess. I'm not sure what these two flowers are specifically or what this crop is, so definitely let me know in the comments if you have an idea. In addition to this graphic, across the various trailers, we've also seen what appears to be bok choy, pumpkins, and grapes. These could be turnips. Here we've seen lettuce, maybe some sort of soybean like edamame, and what I believe look like poppies. And in this shot of Sam's general store, we can see some more seeds. These appear to be blackberry seeds, potentially cranberry seeds, and yellow bell pepper seeds. In the player's inventory, we can also see a couple additional flowers, which could be either crops or forageables. But here we have a red rose and I believe an orchid. And then in the most recent clips of the player farm that were shared on Twitter, we can see even more unknown but beautiful flowers something that could be either cabbage or melon, and my personal favorite, blueberries. Now, in addition to all these delightful crops, we will also be able to grow those fruit plants and fruit trees. Fruit plants are bi-seasonal, which means they will grow across two seasons and wither when off season. They take 11 days to mature and do not need to be watered after maturity. To be clear, once they wither, you will have to replant them when they are once again in season, just like you would a crop. So far, we've been introduced to avocado, banana, and dragon fruit plants. 
Fruit trees are still seasonal in a sense because they still only produce fruit in certain seasons. However, they will not wither off season. So you can plant these bad boys once and reap their sweet fruits for years and years to come. So these definitely appear to be a low maintenance option for the farm. They take 28 days to mature and will produce one fruit per day every day for their respective seasons. We were officially introduced to mango, durian, and apple trees. And I believe what we see here is actually a rambutan tree. Honestly, just think of the possibilities for the fruit plants and fruit trees once we unlock that greenhouse. Now, you are actually able to upgrade your seeds, your saplings, and your seedlings with a little bit of help from Ling. To do this, you will first have to collect kelp when diving, process the kelp, likely by using the kelp extractor that we've seen here. And then you'll bring this processed kelp to Ling's lab to permanently upgrade the quality of your products. It seems like if you select the seed upgrade, for example, the quality of all future seeds you plant on your land will be impacted because I doubt they would make you apply the upgrade to each individually purchased seed or seed type. So this is something you're definitely gonna wanna do. These upgrades will help you achieve different qualities of crops. So for example, silver and gold star crops, which will sell for a higher price. We don't know yet if these upgrades are independent from any sort of fertilizer system and how exactly a fertilizer system will work, but it has been recorded in the developer diaries, so basically we can expect some sort of fertilization system. Perhaps we could use compost from the dump or the recycling center, maybe ingredients that we collect underwater. I can only imagine the possibilities, and I'm so curious to see how fertilization complements the lab upgrades. Now, not only can you level up your crops, but you can also level up your own skills as a farmer. By carrying out various farming activities, you will gain skill points, which you can then use to redeem for various perks on the skill tree. We don't exactly know what skills will be available, but we can definitely make some guesses, like increased proficiency with our various tools, increased chance to yield multiple crops from a single plot, increased sell price, increased chance of higher quality crops, and more. Definitely let me know what unique farming skills you would like to see on the skill tree. So with all that being said, what exactly are we going to be doing with everything that we're growing? Well, in early game, you'll likely be wanting to sell a lot of your produce to earn money, either directly at Sam's or by using your handy dandy shipping bin. But you also might wanna first process your harvest with artisan machines to increase the product value. So for example, you might wanna turn your grapes into wine or your cucumbers into pickles before selling them. You likely won't be able to do this in the beginning. I'm imagining you'll first have to gain experience with farming before you're able to unlock the various machines. But once we know more about the available artisan equipment, I will definitely do an entire video on this topic. I think it is so exciting and interesting. So outside of selling, you might also need some of your produce for specific quests. They could be big quests, like maybe Connor needs an emergency supply of pumpkins for a fall festival, or maybe a smaller quest, like Jack requesting a potato for his dinner the next day. These are just examples I came up with, but they will be helpful for gaining favor with the townsfolk and will likely also come with other rewards, like maybe a bit of money. Outside of official quests, you might also want to gift your produce to the townsfolk to level up your hearts with them. And even better, you could first cook a meal with the ingredients you grow and gift them that, which may give more points, especially if it's one of their favorite foods. It also looks like you might need to grow certain crops to unlock various diving areas in this photo that we saw, Grantel was requesting a potato in order for us to pass. So it looks like our crops will come into play underwater as well. And finally, we also don't know whether or not we'll need any of our produce for offerings that we might make to the goddess of flowers, but it does seem somewhat likely. So overall, there's definitely a ton of uses for the produce we grow on our farms. There could be even more than what I've mentioned today. So I definitely wouldn't skip out on this part of the game. I mean, I don't know if you even could or would. It is a farm sim after all. So hopefully that gave you all a pretty good rundown on the farming elements of Coral Island. And now it's time for 
your top comments. These comments were left on my latest newsy type video about Coral Island. The first comment is from AJ who made a lot of great points, uh, but one of the things I wanted to highlight is that they wondered if the Redacted Festival that we were talking about is actually an Earth Day celebration. The team hinted that it was somehow related to tree planting, so some sort of Earth Day festival or celebration would definitely fit the bill for that, so that's a great speculation. Uh, the next comment is from Faye who said, I'm happy the pets let you know how much love they receive. I definitely am so happy that we can track whether or not we've A, pet our animals and B, like actually track specifically how close we are with the animal by like monitoring our heart level with them. So that's definitely gonna be really useful. The final comment is from De Montal. They said, great breakdown of new posts and love how chill these videos are. Great to sit down and listen to with some coffee. Thank you so much, first of all. I know this specific video wasn't quite as chill, but I do like having a nice mixture of chill and more put together videos. So thank you so much. They also just noted some similarities between the player home uh, in Coral Island and in Stardew. And I put them side by side here so you can take a look at them and decide for yourselves if you want to. I think one really good thing to note is that there are going to be different customizations, uh, specifically this one we've seen here. I love this specific customization. I think it's definitely a style I would go for and I can't wait to see what other customizations they have planned. So thank you all so much for always commenting on my videos. I always love to hear from you. Be sure to leave your thoughts down below on this video and maybe you'll be featured in one of my next. And before I leave you today, let's take a look at today's amazing fan art. Today's amazing fan art is so exciting because it is actually the very first fan art that someone has done of me. <laughs> so this is by Tear, and they actually did my portrait as some fan art. I'm so flattered and I love this piece. So thank you so much, Tear. I really appreciate that you took the time to create this. And I just had to share it because my gosh, how sweet and how talented. If anyone would like to submit their Coral Island fan art, I will have my Discord linked in the description. There's a whole channel for it there. So I'm definitely excited to feature a bunch of your art, especially as we approach early access. So definitely go check that out and be sure to show Tear some love in the comments down below. Thank Thank you so so much for sharing your amazing art with us. Well, there you have it friends. That is everything you need to know about farming in Coral Island, at least for now. As always, I look forward to hearing from you in the comments below. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. And until next time, take care. And a very special thanks to Jose, Mandy, Meredith, and for Modus, my Sunstone members, I love you all and thank you so, so much for your support. It really helps to make all of this possible and means the world to me.